Hey, hey, only December 1st. And I've got the hacker box. Let's see what we've got this month. <laughs> Something to keep you warm. Nice, I like that. Oh, hey, I've needed some uh, some shrink wrap or shrink uh, heat shrink tubing. Awesome, and some nice small pieces too, some, uh, thin diameter. Nice. Uh, some batteries. Oh, we've got battery powered doodaddies. I'm thinking Christmas decorations is what I'm thinking. Sadie, don't knock the camera. Okay. Oh, look, um, that is an eight pin chip. I bet you we're programming AT, um, microcontrollers for this thing. Uh, some jumpers. And ICSP, I'm thinking, yeah, this is probably some um, programmer for um, programmer for AT microcontrollers. But what do we have in here? This is the real prize. Whoa! Oh yeah, <laughs> Christmas decorations. It's a soldering kit with. Sadie, come on, seriously. Oh, and uh, things that you can sew into stuff. Oh, nice, 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 nice. So I bet you the, yeah, that's probably a NeoPixel on there, I'm betting. Lily pads or lily pad clones. But hey, is there a um, AT microcontroller in here anywhere? No. Yes, there we go. There's an AT Mega. Oh man, yeah, plenty of soldering to be had. And a couple of jumpers, probably for batteries. Good grief, cat. And yeah, okay. So uh, yeah, bunch of soldering to do. This, um, oh, this might even be, oh no, those are, those are the landing pads for the battery holder. Now, what is in this little box of goodies besides a piezo buzzer, um, holders for our, eight, or for our lithium cells, some resistors, some LEDs, and snaps and whatnot. There's some, some, okay, so there is our... AT Tiny 85, but I thought I saw some other chips in here. Yes. Oh, no, it's another AT Tiny. AT Tiny 85s. So we're going to be using a couple of AT Tiny 85s, so that's why we have this thing to sit them in and program. And look at this. Is that, yeah, that's probably got an AT Tiny on it already. That's lily pad. That's, is that another lily pad? No, that's probably just a power supply for your lily pads. All right, very good. Very good. So, yes. So, power supply, an ET Tiny, a way of hooking things together. And these are very large. I don't know if you can see those. The thing about the lily pads, and I've wanted to play with these for a while too, is um, they're kind of designed to be um, wearables. So what these large holes are for really is to sew conductive wire, a uh, conductive thread onto. So you can mount this on, um, on a garment and then, uh, run conductive thread to various other places on the garment and have things, um, things controlled by a microcontroller. So you have basically a wearable microcontrolled object. So <clears throat> this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, a friend of mine bought herself a skirt that had um, lights in it, and uh, but I don't think the lights actually did anything. So um, if we've got a piezo buzzer, we might be able to use that as a microphone <laughs> to, um, to actually uh, connect to um, listen to sound and actually have a like a uh, a um, a color organ that um, reacts to sound, which I think would be kind of cool. Um, 
so that's one idea for a project. Um, these things apparently are um, self-flashing LEDs. So these will these will just flash um, at some random interval. So maybe that's what these are. And this is something that's programmable. It's like a large NeoPixel. I'll have to I'll have to check what's uh, on the website. But in any event, um, a nice little collection of doodads to experiment with um, two things: wearables and programming. Wearables and programming um, microcontrollers for in installing in projects. So yeah, nice little box. So if you've been around the hacker boxes for a while, oh my battery's dead. You will have you might remember this project, which was back very early on, and it was using a um, an ST um, STC microcontroller to control um, a LED cube. And on the bottom of this thing are some LEDs. And I was trying to figure out by um, tracing connections how these were getting back to pins on the microcontroller. And I could never figure that out. Like I could, when I, when I, sorry, when I would try and trace all of these LEDs to try and figure out what got them to, um, to flash, I could never figure out why they were actually flashing because they're not connected to any of the pins on the microcontroller. And it turns out that they are self-flashing LEDs. So inside of here is some uh, something, uh, I'm not sure what the mechanism is that enables this um, this behavior, this you know color changing, self-flashing, they, they go through a bunch of stuff. It doesn't really look like there's a microcontroller in there. It might just be some, um, uh, but there has to be a circuit in there that is doing that. So either there's a, a capacitor that's charging up and, and down, or there is some sort of a microcontroller in there. Um, I'm not sure. But in any event, these guys will produce some sort of a, uh, a flashing pattern when you connect them up to power. So maybe let's see if we can um, we can see that really quickly. Okay, so let's let's try and connect one of these guys up. I'm not sure if it's um, long is we'll find out soon enough. And it's not really any harm to hook these guys up backwards because they just won't work. They're a diode. Oh yeah, look at that. So it just sort of fades back and forth between blue, red. They're not quite as vibrant as these guys, which do a lot of blinking and doodabbling. Unless I've just burnt this thing out, which I suppose is possible. Probably should have looked at the, uh, the color code. Okay, so that's... Um, 10k and these are 1k. Maybe I had too much resistance. So uh, what am I doing? Or maybe that battery is wearing out. Well, that's much brighter. Yeah, I just had too little current flowing to it. That's all. So yeah. So it goes between, it cycles around through the different colors. So yeah, you want to have um, 1k resistors for current limiting and then it stops. And do they start again? Weird. Oh, right. This guy. If you're not drawing enough power, ugh. keep forgetting. Okay. Let's get a reliable power supply. As I was saying, these things were, I, I don't know if I did the video on them yet or not, but I, I, inside of here, um, is a, um, is a, uh, boost converter that takes the 3.7 nominal voltage of the 18650 cells and boosts them up to five volts. But you have to have um, some minimum current draw in order for this to keep working. So it'll run for 15 or 30 seconds, I forget which, some amount of time before it will shut itself off. Right, forgot about that. Okay, let's uh, try that again with a reliable power supply. Okay, there we go. So now it's connected up to a power supply that's not going to fail or slow down or stop. 
and yeah there we go and it keeps going it's, it keeps cycling through its various colors so that's what it's supposed to do all right and so that goes on to a little doodabi right here okay the next little piece of um uh, hacker boxery is really nice actually i like it a lot <clears throat> so what it uses is a um some transistor simple transistor oscillators Okay, so this is the circuit that goes on to the um, the blinky um, the blinky box <clears throat> here, the hack the planet uh, badge. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It's got three banks of LEDs that um, have uh, that are connected to a cascading set of oscillators, RC RC oscillating uh, RC. Um, time constant controlling the period of the oscillations and they're not quite in sync but they're kind of in sync so here's here's how the circuit works you apply power to here and all of the um, the positive sides of the LEDs are at um, at um, plus five or plus six or whatever voltage you're applying the um, the LEDs start out non-conducting because all of these transistors are off you apply power, current will, s no f power is going to flow through the LEDs because all of these transistors are off initially, but this transistor's base will become, pa will become through, through this resistor here, a little bit of current will flow, turning on the base of this transistor, which starts current flowing through here. Now, when current can flow through here, that means current can also flow through here, which starts charging up this capacitor. Once this capacitor is charged to um, a potential that's sufficient to turn the base of this transistor on, this capacitor starts to charge. And once this capacitor charges up enough so that the, um, the, it's at a potential that is sufficient to turn the base of this transistor on, then this capacitor starts to charge up. So they charge up in a cascade until such time as this capacitor is fully charged, in which case no more current is going to be flowing through here because this capacitor is fully charged. There's no more charge that can flow into it, in which case there's no current flowing through here, in which case it turns the base of this transistor off. Similar story here. Um, well, hang on a second, we'll get there. Um, so this transistor turns off, and this capacitor can't charge up anymore in which case no current is flowing through here, and then this transistor turns off, in which case no current is flowing through here, and then this transistor turns off. But there's still a base current here, so this charges up again. So even though it looks like, uh, so this turns off, this turns off, this charges up, until this one gets fully charged, and then these, three, these two turn off, and then this one starts charging up again. So you get this cascading effect of the various... Um, the various uh, banks of LEDs. Now, playing around with the values of these, the um, these resistors, the um, let's call these R1, R2, and R3, and then this is R4, R5, and R6. Nobody labels resistors this way, but let's just say so. The um, the first bank of three resistors that control the charging of the capacitor. And these capacitor values, which in the hacker box are 47 microfarads, will determine the, um, the charging, the, the cycle time. So you can play with these values a bit. And so what, I've, what I did is to, you know, I, these are actually um, three, 33 microfarad capacitors. You could, you could pop in the, pop back in the 47s and see what they do. Is that the system? And there, there you have them in their new oscillating pattern. Now, these tend to blink on and off fairly fast. This one's bl blinking really fast. I don't know if you can see it. It's actually blinking a little bit. It just sort of goes beep, beep, beep. But these sort of alternate back and forth. I actually like it better at the 33 microfarad um, time constant for the charging and discharging. But we can also try it with um, 22 microfarad. Um, capacitors and see what that looks like. And when we put the last one in, that should start chooching. Yeah, that looks pretty good too. 
I, I don't think 47 microfarads is the right choice for the capacitor. You could charge, try changing the resistor as well, obviously, right? Because those, um, <clears throat> those um, work in tandem. <clears throat> so what did I say? We have 1K resistors in there. Uh, brown, black, yeah, uh, orange, no, one, 10K. Uh, 10k. So we could twiddle the resistors up and down a bit too. We could go up to a 15 or down to an 8.2 um, and see what effect that has on the speed of the blinks. Um, or we could calculate it and whatnot, but uh, it's, it's fun swapping components. Okay, so that's with 8.2k um, resistors and 22 microfarads. So if we Bump that up to 47 microfarads. Let's see what it looks like. So you see that the, the center ones aren't blinking nearly fast enough. They're still going short there. And what does it look like with the 33s in there? It seems a little slower than before. Maybe we can drop the uh, the resistors down a bit or move them up in value. See what, um, like a 15K resistor. So that means the capacitor should charge slower. So that means that we'll get a, a longer blink. And yeah, there you go, longer blink. So, the higher the value of the resistor, keeping the capacitance fixed will increase the time constant because it is, well, it's an RC. So the larger the resistance, well, mm -hmm. let me put it another way. The higher the resistance, the longer it will take to charge the capacitor for a given value of a capacitor, uh, for a given value of a capacitor. If you keep the the product the same between the resistor and the capacitor, you will have the same amount of charging time. And if you um, lower the value of the capacitor, the faster it will charge, just as if you, uh, with a fixed value of resistance. And if you lower the value of the res resistor with a fixed value of capacitance, you'll slow the blinking. So actually, I much prefer that um, speed of blink to the other one because it's a little bit more obvious. But um, yeah, um, that is how this little circuit works. Cascading RC oscillators controlled by a transistor that um, turns the charging on and off in a cascading fashion. Okay, so I was totally wrong about this thing. Well, not totally wrong about this thing, but there were some things I, I got wrong about the, this. This is a DigiSpark. Um, board without the USB um, uh, part of the board that just actually plugs into the USB port, but it has a USB um, micro USB connector so you can plug it in using um, micro USB to do the programming. This header is breaking out the pins that are coming out of it. So, um, what is a DigiSpark you're asking? Um, well, I mean, they've got a good write up on the uh, website, but for um, the uh, 30,000 foot view. There was a Kickstarter project that um, was uh, was um, launched a few years ago that um, took an AT Tiny 80 or AT Tiny 85, and they wrote something called a um, a micronucleus for it, so that it would be able to natively receive USB commands through the microcontroller here. And then you can flash um, a memory. Uh, you could flash the the ROM on this thing, so that you can store programs in it. So it had a sort of a bootloader that was also a USB um, interface device that's built into this chip. So how do you get that bootloader onto there? Um, you're going to have to um, flash the um, AT Tiny 85 with the um, with the uh, micronucleus code and and that's what uh, some of the other parts are for but anyways yeah that's what what this guy is um it is an ATtiny85 but um, we're not going to program it 
uh, necessarily using, although you could, we're not going to program it using this necessarily, although we could. We're going to also be able to program it using USB only. So, um, so yeah, that's uh, one thing that I was wrong about. Okay, so I think that this guy um, deserves its own um, video. So I'm going to end, end this recording here and um, uh, do a little bit of playing around with this guy and see what sort of um, naughty and nice things I can build with it because Christmas. And uh, yeah, so um, thanks again for watching and thanks Hackerbox for giving me another bundle of goodies to uh, play around with. It's been fun hacking around a bit and um, uh, checking out this circuit. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now. <laughs> Insert end credits here? <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yeah. Once again, I'm impressed. Nice little collection of doodabblies and diddly daubs to have fun with. Very good. Very good hacker boxes. Very good.